Right, so we want to create a conceptual schema diagram and uh, the best program to use that, to do that with, is Visio Modeler. Now that's installed on all the computers in the school, but it's also available for free uh, download from uh, Microsoft site. Now I've shared a document with you called Installing Visio Modeler on Windows Vista and 7. There are some special steps you have to take to install it, but once it's installed, it's all good. Now, this is our Visio Modeler window. To create what we want, we need to click on New, and then what we want is an object role modeling diagram. Notice all the boxes and circles, that's the one we want. These other ones, we don't care about, they don't make sense for us. So we press Finish, and we get a blank document. Now what I like to do is maximize it so I get my whole window. Now, there are a couple of things you can do. We have a toolbar down here on the right, um, with things like entities and roles, and that's our nest, and that's for the joining them, and we can actually create our um, conceptual schema diagram like this. You can do this. Um, I'm just showing you that it is possible. It's actually not the easiest way of doing it. So we can do all that and that's wonderful. But what we can do is come up here to uh, create a new fact which is F5 or quick fact which is F6. Now F6 quick fact that's just your base. Not very useful. But because we've actually spent the time creating all our conceptual scheme, our um, elementary sentences and elementary facts, we can create a new fact by pressing F5 or clicking on that. And it comes up with this. And this is enter freeform fact. Now what we can do in here is just type it in uh, as we'd like. So student, and then in brackets, just like we do normally. Okay, so we have this kind of uh, thing happening. So that's our, this is our entity, um, and this is its value type. So this is our entity name and the value type. Then we add the roles just like we do with a sentence. Um, so it has is for, and then I'm just going to say name. Now I'm saying name because Visio Modeler has this wonderful thing where if this is called student, you can't have another one called student over here with a different value. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to press accept, and there you go, I've got that. Now, notice that I now have my entity in just red. I don't have the um, values after it. And that's okay because now what I can do is uh, say this and press enter and you'll notice it's building off student. So now I've got student ID has a phone number which is great and I can go student ID studies is studied by a subject ID and so I have that and then I can select this and go okay well subjects another one that I want subject has is for a name again we've got that so now it's got a name there isn't that great um, and I can add them all in here now also in here I can then uh, come through here and you'll notice it's a bit messy that's great but we're just building the base now this name is actually going to be a value Okay, so it actually changes it into a dotted uh, s dotted entity. So that creates your base conceptual schema. Now, if, for example, we want to add um, our levels of achievement, a student studies a subject. The subject doesn't have the level of achievement because otherwise that means everybody who does that subject gets whatever that LOA is. The student doesn't have the um, level of achievement because that would mean that every subject that they study has that LOA. Instead it's a combination of the student and the subject that gets the result. So to do that we click on the uh, role that we want to nest and we click that and then all of a sudden it nests it. Now I can edit that to um, instead of student subject I can call it studies and there we go. And now what I can do is build off that and I can go F5 studies has is for LOA and now I've got things nested coming off that and that's that's brilliant I love that that's fantastic so that's pretty much the basics for that what you can do then is neaten it up by um, changing the shape and the size of your entities and then selecting you can do it all one by one or you can just select all the ones you want and then go to a range so that's a range and then make same size both and now they all look like that. I can then neaten it up by putting you know the name over here so it's in between the two. Um, that there I can rotate this so flip orientation I can do that. Be careful when you do flip orientation sometimes Visio Modeler isn't smart enough to do, know that that stick needs to go there and then you need to um, change the um, reverse rolls. 
Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So enjoy using your Visio Modeler. Don't forget to save and call it something useful. So I'll call this one Students Studying so that I can come back and use it again later.